for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shana Park, your host for Money Talks. My guest today is Rayanne Ishevez. Welcome back to the show, Rayanne. Thank you, Shana. It's always a pleasure being here. So thank you for having me. It's always, it's always fun having you. I'm so looking forward to our conversation we're having today. Um, so March is actually Women's History Month. And yesterday was Girls' Day, so happy belated Girls' Day. I thought it would be a great um, time for us to talk about women and the important women in our lives who have taught us valuable money lessons. Yes, absolutely. So um, happy belated uh, Girls' Day to you as well. I love March. It's actually um, very significant. Like you said, it's, it was Girls' Day, right, um, yesterday, the 3rd of March every year, um, which is interesting because it's actually something that not like all it's not really an official holiday but because we have such Japanese um a huge Japanese like culture and influence in Hawaii right uh, we celebrate girls day so and then of course it's women's history month and another reason is because of course March is my birthday so that's why March is awesome <laughs> yes March is a great fantastic month happy early birthday <laughs> So let's get into it. You know, can you give a quick timeline of women's history? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with um, women's history, so the reason why we celebrate, um, you know, Women's History Month is because we want to, of course, um, acknowledge, you know, how far we've come as women. So let's start with, you know, going all the way back to uh, um, just a little over 100 years where we first were able to vote. So finally, in 1920, women had um, rights to vote. And that's huge because this is really the first um, step towards gender um, equality because prior to 1920, only, um, you know, men could vote, right? So that was a huge deal in 1920. And then, of course, um, in 1960, you know, uh, women entered the workforce. So it's not like women didn't work prior to that, but mainly they were you know, um, primarily, um, you know, uh, at home, right, taking care of the family. But because of what happened in World War II, where many of the men were deployed um, and more women needed to go into the workforce, and now in 1960, that's where we kind of officially see women entering into the workforce, which really helped, you know, the, our economy. Uh, and then, of course, fast forward, 2013, we had um, women were able to serve in combat, um, and in 2018, we had the most female Congress in the U.S. That's a big deal because, you know, women bring a different perspective when it comes to uh, that, you know, only women face. So they bring issues to um, help shape some of the laws um, that we have today. And um, in 2019, we had an all-women space rock, which I thought was really cool. And then 2020 we was uh, our very first elected female vice president. So that's just some of the things that happened in the last 100 years. Wow. We've come a very, very long way. It's crazy to think that not too long ago, it really not too long ago, you know, we weren't even working. And now we have our very own first, you know, female vice president. So how does the timeline affect our financial lives today as women? You know, that's such a great question. I think, you know, even though we've made so much progress as women today, there are still what we call financial facts of life that women have to face. So some good and some, you know, that we are still working on. So um, first one is women are inheriting more money. So 70% of the money that's going to be transferred over the next several years and over two generations are actually going to be going to women. Right. So that's a huge deal, whether, you know, we say two generations because it's parents and sometimes, you know, from their spouse. Um, and so that's that's a lot of assets, right, that women will inherit over the next few years. Um, also, 39 percent of U.S. investable assets are controlled by women um, and 70 to 80 percent of consumer uh, spending is also controlled by women. So you can see how that can make a huge impact, right, on um, the economy. And um, women today are, uh, we have more uh, women who have um, degrees, you know, higher education. 
but unfortunately, even though we are higher, you know, more educated, we're still earning less. I think it's somewhere about 80 cents, um, you know, we're, for, for women over men, right? So we're earning slightly less than men, even till today, even with all the progress that we've made. Um, and of course, that that translates into, of course, um, that puts us at a slight disadvantage of um, future savings, right? Which also another financial fact that we um, face as women is we are um, caregivers, right? Whether that's like childbirth or caring for others, our parents, um, other family members, that can also affect us financially. And so not only are we earning less, but also we're not, we have to take um, a career pause or work, we can only work part time or completely stop working because we have to take care of um, family, which then again brings us to our next point, right? For women in retirement, um, all of those things um, can stack against us when it comes to our um, financial future. And um, we are also living longer, and so we actually need more money, right? So um, because we live longer, we need more money. We will more likely need um, more health care, um, which, again, translates into needing more money. We're also more vulnerable to gray divorces and poverty um, in uh, like during widow in widowhood. There's, um, you know, we see that women are more vulnerable to poverty when that happens. So, you know, some of the things that uh, we want to talk about as women because um, good and bad, but we have to, you know, really talk about it so we can be better prepared, knowing that these are just some of the challenges, not all women face, but a lot of us may face, during, you know, throughout our lifetime. Yes. Wow. And it's very interesting that we're having this conversation. Because when you're discussing all of these different topics, it's something that we see and hear often. But when you're stating all these facts, it's like, oh my goodness, this is going to happen sometime in my lifetime or someone I know um, and love and care about. It's going to happen in their lifetime. And when you think about it over the years, you know, we have come a very long way, but we do take on a huge responsibility in the household as well. And I think it's fantastic that we're transitioning into being more financially responsible and taking on these bigger roles. But also, um, you know, we're we're the ones now that, you know, end up becoming the um, financially responsible, right? We handle all the bills. I can see that a lot for women these days. And men, they just go to work or they just hand off all the financial responsibilities to women. So to see everything else that we're going to have to deal with throughout our life, it it may seem like a lot. And I'm hoping that this conversation we have today will better, you know, prepare at least me for the future. So I know what's to come and I can feel a lot more comfortable. But, you know, let's take this time to honor a few women that have made a difference in Hawaii. And, you know, can you please share with us who these women are? Absolutely. I mean, there are so many um, that women that have made a huge impact in Hawaii. So there's just too many of them to list um, for our, you know, um, discussion today. But just some of the ones that I really, that I picked out was, um, you know, I, I feel like these women have, of course, made a um, huge impact in Hawaii. And I think a lot of us know who these women are. So the first one I want to, of course, honor is Queen Lilio Kalani, right, who was actually the only reigning queen of Hawaii. Um, and so I want to read to you this, what I found here. It says, um, Queen Lilio Kalani presided over the Hawaiian kingdom during a time of great economic growth. So by 1890, 21 international treaties and more than 80 embassies around the world recognized the Hawaiian islands. So that's a huge deal. Um, also, Hawaii and its multi-ethnic society enjoyed universal suffrage um, in 1840, right? Which means that that's a whole 120 years before the United States. I mean, we just talked about how women, um, we didn't actually get to vote till 1920, but um, in, for, you know, Hawaii, this was already happening in 1840. Um, and then it says here, 
the there was universal health care um, and 95 percent literacy rate you know during her, her time so which was the second highest in in the world so that's pretty significant so um she it also says here that she um, was even though she was not an American woman, she made a significant vote in the framework of American imperialism. So, a force to be reckoned with, she protected her country, citizens, and role as um, sovereign until her passing. So, you know that's that's huge, right? Um, that's Queen Lilio Kalani. Um, the second uh, woman I would like to honor is, of course, um, Patsy Mink. So she was the first woman of color in the U.S. House of Representatives and the first Asian American woman elected to Congress. So uh, another, you know, huge um, seat here for Patsy Mink. And she served actually a total of 12 terms in Congress. Um, so that's pretty significant. So she, yeah, she made a huge difference, of course, in, um, in, representing Hawaii. And then the last one I wanted to kind of point out is, um, so she may not, uh, actually, so I know, the, of course, everyone knows who Patsy Mink is and Queen Lady Okalani, um, but this other lady, I just found this, actually, article um, on USA Today, which they actually, um, every year they honor women. Um, they have a US USA Today's Women of the Year. Okay, so it's a recognition for women across the country who have made a significant impact. And so um, there is a woman from Maui, her name is Lisa Paulson, who was actually recently recognized for her efforts, you know, during the, the Maui fire. And, um, you know, as we know, it was one of the deadliest fires in history. And she actually led a group of tourism managers on a daring mission to evacuate 12,000 tourists from the island. And so, um, you know, so this is very, very recent. She actually, I think they just honored her uh, this year for that award. And so we're proud, of course, of all the all the other women who have made an impact in Hawaii. But um, I just figured I'd share a few, um, the two that, you know, most of us know and love and respect. And then, of course, this is a great honor from, um, you know, Lisa receiving the Women of the Year. Yeah, these are all very influential and incredible women. And I like how you're sharing people from, you know, history, like Queen Lily Okulani in the past, like Patsy Mink, and, you know, someone more recent, like Lisa Paulson. And the incredible and amazing thing, too, is that these are these women are all different races, right? And they have made such a huge impact, um, not only in Hawaii, but in the world. And going back to, you know, Queen Liliopolani, I feel like she has tremendously changed the whole trajectory of how Hawaii is with her reign, right? And she did a lot during her time. And she is continuously um, honored till this day. She's a very, very special woman in Hawaii. With that being said, you know, Rayanne, who are some special women in your life that taught you valuable um, money lessons? Yeah, what a, what a great question, Shana. Thank you for that. Um, plus, I've had, I have had so many wonderful women um, impact my life. And so um, I'll, I'll share a few. Um, so I grew up, of course, with my mom and uh, three other sisters and um, an auntie who was very influential as far as you know um, my financial life. So I'll start with her. Um, she, from a, a very early age, one of the things that she had taught me about um, money was, she, and this is it, it, it still you know um, has stuck with me till today. Um, but she she said when you're making a purchase of anything. You know, always ask yourself, is this something that's going to appreciate in value, right? And so um, every time I make, like, significant purchases or want to make impulse buying, um, I always remember her, you know, and she was really one of the first ones to teach me about um, just, again, not just 
throwing my money away, but instead investing my money in things that will appreciate. So she um, early on taught me to invest in, in real estate. Um, so she was one of my um, major influence, you know, when it comes to finance and investing. Um, and then some of the other financial lessons uh, and impact that I learned along the way was from my sisters. And so um, the, my, I have one sister who married very early on. She, um, straight from high school, my brother-in-law joined the military and they were married very early on. They had children very early on. And so my sister pretty much was a stay-at-home mom the entire time. And so what that taught me kind of watching them throughout the years was um, number one, how communication about money is so important when it comes to um, your two marriages, right? Couples. And we talked about this last uh, last show, right, Shana, how important it is to communicate about money. And I saw that firsthand actually with my um, sister and um, that it, communication is important and understanding your role in the household is important because my brother-in-law works, but my sister took care of the family, but it didn't mean that their roles were any less um, because they, again, they both knew what their roles are. Um, but it taught me that, you know, communication and planning for fin financial planning for their future was important because of course, you know, it, um, it put my, it technically my sister would have, been in a vulnerable place if they didn't share their finances, but because they did and they planned along the way, um, you know, they were able to set themselves up for the future, even though it was only my brother-in-law working. Um, and then my other sister, um, I, she actually, what I learned from her was, um, you know, the devastation, financial devastation from divorce. Right. So I know these are some of the things that we talked about, you know, when we talked about the financial facts of life. And I've seen, I've seen it firsthand where, again, women can be very vulnerable when it comes to, um, you know, divorce. A lot of times um, they walk away with, with, you know, less assets or, or nothing at all. And so in my sister's case, I kind of saw that financial devastation. Um Fortunately, though, you know, she was able to um, graduate as a nurse and, you know, was able to take care of herself. But I think the lesson learned in that is also making sure, kind of learning from my, like my other sister, right, that um, you have to still um, put things in place for yourself. And so that when things, you know, like that happen, um, you'll still be okay financially. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah, no, and, it really does. And, um, of course, there was my younger sister, who's a single mom. I learned from her, uh, you know, the, the, the hustle to really do whatever you need to do to be able to provide for um, yourself and your family. And sometimes, you know, uh, and really, you know, budgeting and saying no, you know, sometimes is really what... Um, so that you can take care of your responsibilities. Sometimes it's hard to say no to the things that we want instant gratification, but she really taught me to be disciplined uh, and budget so that, you know, first things first, prioritizing, taking care of family and having to say no sometimes. So I, you know, that in itself is a huge financial lesson. Um, and of course, lastly, my, you know, my mom, um, she, what she taught me was the value of, working hard and uh, being generous. And so, um, you know, working hard has taught me that it doesn't matter your background, where, you know, where you come from, your skill set, how much knowledge you have. Those are the things that you can work on as long as you're willing to work hard towards those, attaining those things, right? And of course, you know, being generous, the, the mindset of um, abundance, and really, you reap what you sow, um, and you cannot give of what you don't have. So those are the things that um, she had taught me. So, yeah, I was very privileged to grow up with very strong women in my family. Um, and, you know, of course, the countless other women who have impacted me throughout the years. But um, what about you, Shana? I'm sure that you had 
you know, many influential women in your life, um, especially coming from having a very strong mom. Uh, what are some of the <laughs> things or, you know, you learned from the important women in your life? Yeah, well, you know, Ran, I feel very, very um, lucky to know every single person that you're talking about. And I have to say, you do come from a very, very strong family, but a bunch of strong women too. And to start off, yes, I I feel like my mom is the most influential person in my life. However, the second person is also you. And when I you know, was thinking about this earlier, really the only two people are you and my mom. And you know, my mom, I've learned so much from her in terms of, you know, hardships, but also persevering through everything and really taking control of your situation where you don't have to, you know, stay somewhere because of life and, you know, hardships. You can definitely put yourself in a better financial situation. And, you know, growing up, I feel like we, I had a very great childhood. We were pretty well off, I would say. However, with the lack of financial education, I could see how that, you know, was really devastating for my family. And, you know, we lost a lot. We lost a lot. And, you know, after my parents had divorced and through those financial hardships, I realized that it's taking responsibility and accountability and the power of education. And just, you don't know what you don't know. So I'm very grateful for my mom teaching me um, about the power of taking control of life and my own financial situation. And I think one valuable lesson she taught me is, you know, the decision I make today will reflect, you know, 10, 15 years from now. And it's important that I'm very cautious about every every decision I do make financially or big purchases or small purchases because it'll lead me into where I want to go. And, you know, with you as well, I feel like you have taught me so much about money. Uh, my mom, she's, I wouldn't say she's old, she's very young, but we're we're much closer in age too. I feel like you can relate to my Gen Z mind and you give me really fruitful advice and you know how to talk me down when I'm in, you know, financial situations where I just don't know what to do. And I think my point here is that every, every day or throughout each season of my life, there's something that needs to be um, taught and learned, right? And I feel like you two continuously teach me so many important lessons, whether I like it or not, tough love or sweet love, I feel like I get a lot of value out of you too. So basically you and my mom, <laughs> you're basically my other mom. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, that being said, I feel like being women, you know, the future is women right now and I feel so much liberty into being able to learn about money and be able to make my own money and when you just shared about history earlier as well you don't realize how far we've come and how different our lives could possibly be if we were still living in a time where we're not able to work or we are only you know limited to just caring for the household but now I feel very fortunate that that has stretched. You know, we see in our times that we live in now that the men are cooking or staying at home and the women are out at work. And I just think that's so beautiful to see. You know, it doesn't have to be so traditional and uh, gender roles, right, of what we can and cannot do. So I know for myself, you know, I don't cook at all and I love what I do for my career. and. You know, I'm out there hustling, but transition transitioning into, you know, the new season of my life. Um, I will be staying at home with baby and I'm really grateful that, you know, the roles can be reversed with my husband. And I know for you as well, right? Your your husband, he he provides a lot in the household. 
And he's the yeah, most I, I can't <laughs> complain. I love my husband. He does. He definitely does a lot. And so, you know, and I love what you said about that. It, Cause it really, I think a lot of times, like, you know, especially in the past, we were like identified as certain roles just based on our gender. But I think that that's, you know, like you said, we're seeing a huge shift in that today. And um, because it just, it really doesn't matter. It's really just about equality and what works for the household, right? Um, but I think each um, gender plays an important role. And um, it's important to recognize what that role is. So, yeah. Yeah. And Going based off of our conversation we had last week about money and marriage and this week about women and wealth, my biggest takeaways is communication. And when you shared about your personal stories with you know, your sisters and your auntie and your mom, a big one was communicating and learning and just understanding, yeah, the roles that we have in our life and being able to adjust and switch. Um, when needed to be, right? Don't be so focused on one thing and you have to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I really I feel like um, <laughs> yeah, times are changing and women are becoming more influential in this world and um, we're playing a lot more significant roles and it's important that we recognize that, right? Like I said earlier, the future is female. Yes, absolutely. And what a perfect time to honor all these women um, during Women's History Month. So thank you, Shana. Of course, always a privilege to be on this show. And I just, you know, absolutely love advocating for women, uh, empowering women, uh, when it, especially when it comes to business and, and finances. And so the more we have conversations about these things, I think it's really, um, it, I feel that it gives permission to other women to uh, openly talk about these things to other women and of course their spouses and you know people of influence in their lives so you know really that's the goal right to have open conversations so that we can you know communicate right about these things that are important and um, plan for a better future yes yes and you know thank you again Rayanne so much for being on the show and for giving insight on powerful women in history and in your personal life as well. And it's great that we have this entire month to honor um, women, wealth, and the history of women. So I hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shana Park, a Gen Z Inspiring Lives celebrity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.